짜잔! <웃음> Before I discovered pour over, I hated coffee. Yeah, I really hated it. Yeah, it was mainly because I did not have any good experience drinking black coffee. I would I would normally go to the most popular coffee chain in the world for a milk-based drink, right? And then eventually I discovered that there are a lot of different coffees that doesn't taste like charcoal. <laughs> And then when I started drinking specialty coffee, it came to a point that it was really hard for me to understand different packaging. Like these are all empty, um, these are all empty packaging of the past coffees I've drank. For today's episode, I'm gonna help you understand how to read packaging labels. So we have coffee here from H proper a lot of candid because I had a face of all candid beans Escolta Coffee Company Cape Cape by Linea Linea Good Cup Coffee Bacofa Maria Luz mm. um, Yes Escolta Candid Coffee Monkey Company Escolta Coffee Company Escolta Coffee Company um, Single Origin Escolta Candid Candid H Proper Firefly Candid Escolta uh, this this is from Hong Kong. Firefly. Good cup coffee. Resonate. I think I think this is I think this one here. This is my all-time favorite beans. This is Kenya Tiriku AB by Gardelli. And I haven't bought another bag. Mainly because it's too expensive. <laughs> but they're really good. Yeah. All right. So, when you look at the packaging, what are the things that you actually need to see to be able to tell that this is a good coffee? Right. Let's take let's take this bag for for example. Um, it says here that well, of course the brand is there, but the coffee is Tiriko AB SL28 single variety lot. It is from Kenya. Um, and then they they put the flavor notes here: black currant, grapefruit, lime, and plum. They also put the process, it is Kenya washed. And they also, they even put the quality score, which is 88. So specialty coffees are graded by, by Q graders and they have different scores for each, um, for different beans for every harvest year. Okay, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that it's from Kenya or it's from Ethiopia that every year they have the score of 99. No, every harvest year, it, it changes. All right, um, let's start with the names. Ethiopia is the country, and then the Guji or the Gesha or the Irgachev, that, that, is their, that is the place where it is planted. So I have different Ethiopia beans here. Ethiopia from single origin. Ethiopia, two different Ethiopias from H proper. 
and then one more Ethiopia from Resonate. Right. All of these beans are from the country Ethiopia, but they have different zones. Um, they have different villages. Here in the Philippines, sometimes we call it sitio or barangay or um, region. Um, for Ethiopia, they have different villages, right? So, or villages or region. So for this one, this is Ethiopia Irgachev, right? This one, the Wimowe number nine from H proper is Ethiopia Guji, right? And then this one is Ethiopia Gesha. And then this one is from Resonate. This is, this is Ethiopia Guji again. So at the same time, at the same time, it doesn't mean that two different brands from two different brands selling the same exact beans from the same exact harvest year, it doesn't mean that they're going to have the same taste, right? It will differ again from the roasting, from the process. All right. So that is simply the place where the beans came from. Next that we will see normally is the process. So this one right here is anaerobic natural. This one right here is natural. This one here is supernatural. And this one here is washed. So the most common processes they do for beans is washed and natural. Okay. The way they do natural is they leave the cherries to dry under the sun or under a shaded area. Sometimes, sometimes they do it under a shaded area with an aired bed, with a floating bed. Sometimes they do it on the floor. Sometimes, for some cases, they, they put the coffee cherries onto the roofs or, of their houses. Yeah, there is a lot of ways to do the natural process but the simplest explanation is when we say natural you leave the cherries to dry on its own and then you harvest the beans thereafter right and then the washed process usually right after picking the cherries they, they bring it to the processing plant or the processing facility and then they take out the beans immediately and then they leave the beans to dry on its own. Take out the mucilage, take out the, the parchment, and then it's a green bean from there. All right, so what is the main difference of washed and natural coffee? Washed coffee is very clean, tends to be more on the cleaner, more balanced taste of, taste of coffee, right? As for the natural, since you leave it to dry, you don't know what's inside the cherry, and then you let it dry for a couple of weeks or a couple of months before you finally open it and then process it for, uh, and then process it to become green beans. This natural processing, the drying, the natural drying, tends to put in a lot of flavors, even the, even the unpleasant ones, into the coffee bean itself. So that reflects in your cup. So next that you want to look at is the MASL, meters above sea level. So this is the elevation where the plant is located. Most Ethiopia beans are very high up. They have high elevations. So the lowest that I have here is 1,900 meters above sea level. So that is very high. What does elevation does to coffee? So when you look at the elevation on the packaging, the higher the number, the better the coffee, the more expensive, right? Basically, what this means is when you have coffee plants in high elevations, they are deprived of oxygen, of most nutrients, right? Therefore, they have lower yield. They take longer to be harvested. But 
but it is actually the very reason why they are more flavorful they have better tasting qualities they have more aromatics they are more floral because since they are deprived and the cherries take a long time to develop the plants push sugar and more nutrients just so that the cherries ripen next to look for is roast profile so you have light light roast medium roast and dark roast that's that's it this um, generalized term of light medium dark is not an absolute term so it still depends on the roaster All right take this for an example it is um, it is a safari blend from Kahawa 1893. The packaging says it is medium roast. But when you open it, yeah, it's almost medium dark. But for them, if it's medium roast, then it's medium roast. Even the smell is medium dark. So yeah, it differs from roaster to roaster. It is simply a general general term that they use, but they're not absolute um, classifications. All right. Lastly is the flavor notes. So the flavor notes are not literal um, flavors that you will taste. All right. They are mostly generalizations of the taste bracket that you will um, experience when you drink the coffee. Like for this one. Um, Sicho San Roque Natural CR95 from Escolta Coffee Company. It says here that you will taste jackfruit, pomelo, and green mangoes. The reason why it is not literally like that because we all have different sense of tastes. We all have different experiences. So basically, what they're trying to say is for the pomelo, you might get a little of the tang tangy sensation or the zest of the pomelo and then green mangoes is the um, green mangoes is the acidic part of the taste so you might get um, like a sharp acidity then bright and then the sweetness will come from the jackfruit so it, it, it resembles the sweetness of the jackfruit right next is this um, Wimowe number no. 9 so this one actually blew my mind. Um, it, you really can taste the ripe mango because the flavor notes on this one is mango, strawberry, and passion fruit. Right. So this coffee is very juicy on the mouth. It's, the mouth feel is like passion fruit. And the acidity comes from the strawberry. And it, and it smells of ripe mango. Um, I made a video about this um, specific coffee. I'll put the link here. But the label here, it simply is trying to tell you that the sweetness that you will get resembles that of a ripe mango. It doesn't literally taste like mango shake that you get from a restaurant or a strawberry at the same time. It resembles all right, it resembles the sweetness that you get from mango, which is quite heavy, very thick. And then the acidity of strawberry, which is like bright, lively acidity. All right, sometimes these coffee taste exactly the same as, the, as what they put on the labels. But most of the time, they are um, simple descriptions that you can actually easily identify so let's say for example this one the kenya tiriku black currant i haven't tasted black currant in my life because we don't have black currant in the philippines right but i like it now you get my point even the grapefruit i don't we don't normally have grapefruit in the philippines but i really love it and sometimes these descriptions differ from place to place. So like in the Philippines, we would put pomelo, right? We would put pomelo for the acidic part of the coffee. And then for the other and then for other parts of the world, they would put grapefruit. 
right? Because they don't have pomelo in their country. They only know of grapefruit. That's what I am trying to tell you. Like for this one right here, San Roque Tipica Naturals. Candy jackfruit, cola, cola, and molasses. Molasses is brown sugar. I have a coffee here that says they have brown sugar. Yeah, but simply it is it is the it is the sweet part of the coffee. Right? Okay, so I know it's it's a bit overwhelming all the information right now, but um, to make it simple, the names the names of the coffee will differ from from one brand to another. It depends if they want to tell you the country or the origin of the coffee. Um, the most important things to look at is the roast profile, the elevation, the roast date, and then the process, right? I think those are the more standardized um, informations that you can look for in your packaging. Um, let's take this for example. So Anna got this in the US at a grocery store but it says all the right information. So it's from Limu, Ethiopia. Process is light. It's a whole bean and they have processing information which is natural and then they have flavor notes and then the packaging also says that it's a single origin. So that's, that is all the information that you need. All I need to know that is that it's a naturally processed coffee bean, that it's a light roast, and it's a single origin. Try to not be overwhelmed with the packaging. As right here, it's an Ethiopia bean again, Ergachev Edido. So Ergachev is the region, Edido is maybe the farmer or maybe Maybe the village, right? But it is a natural process coffee. It is roasted April 6. Yeah, that's it. That's all the information that you need. This is a more simpler, this is a more simpler um, packaging, right? This one, it is a Mount Apo. Marivik Dubria. So Marivik Dubria is the farmer. Mount Apo is the place where the beans came from. Um, the process is anaerobic natural. There is varietal. Roast level is filter. Sometimes for light roast and medium roast, they would put filter instead of light or medium. Because there is mainly two different um, roast profiles, the espresso roast profile and then the filter profile so the roast date is January 15 and then they did not even put the flavor notes so but I, I would still buy this right I know it's a bit overwhelming there that is a lot of information but yeah um, I, I, I really I really want to help you understand packaging more because it was one of the hardest it was one of the hardest learnings for me when i started looking for the beans that i really want all right so if you have any questions if you if i missed something out just comment down below and i read all your comments i i reply to most of them i respond to most of them um, if I missed anything, if you want to know something else, just leave your comments down below and I will be glad to answer them. But for now, thank you so much for watching. In the next videos, I'm going to show you more about coffee. Bye!